Hey everybody, got a bit of an unusual video here. Uh, I've been working on some software that originally I just kind of intended to keep to myself, but it's turned out to be way more useful than I anticipated. So I've been working on it and it's at least in a good enough spot to show off and for other people to use if they're interested. So, no script for this video. Not that any of my videos are scripted. So I ramble. Anyways. Have you ever um, been playing games with your buddies and something funny happens and you clip it, save a highlight, or you record the whole round? However it is... If you record your gameplay, however it is that you record your gameplay, and you're like, oh, I want to show my buddies that funny thing that just happened, right? And then you got to, like, alt-tab. I'm, I'm talking about PC. Like, console's different, obviously. You know, if you record to your PC from your console, maybe this applies to you. But, like, I play on PC, and you got to alt-tab out of the game and, like, find the file and open it up and find the start timestamp and the end timestamp and throw it into your video editor and clip it and then find the file you just saved and upload it to YouTube and then give them a link. And it's just like, it's just too much. Um, maybe you guys have a solution to that already. I did not. And as a result, I've just got this, like I play Hunt Showdown and I've just got this directory full of videos yeah these are all like five minute clips going back as far as 2022 uh just because something funny happens and i hit the save button and then maybe i remember and clip it and show my friends and i probably just forget and then i just at that point i can't be bothered to go back and find anything anyways so uh i up to this point, have been using this. Uh, I made a batch file that um, you get the file name and the file extension and the start timestamp and the end timestamp and some quality settings. And I rename, I, I find a random file name and then I this long FFmpeg command to spit out a clip. And then uh, if I got all of this right, I get a clip, you know, 5, 10, 15 seconds, however long, right, of the funny thing. Oh, I got that double kill. Ha, 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 ha. Right? And it's, you know, and, and hopefully it's under the 25 megabyte limit that Discord has, and I can just take the file and drag it into Discord, and I don't have to upload it to YouTube. This, this method works. Certainly it was better than what I had been doing, which was opening AVI Demux and dragging the file into AVI Demux, and that was just a whole situation. Uh, but this still landed me in this place where it's like, I don't want to go clip everything, and like it really had to be a great gaming moment to be like, I got to make a clip um, to be bothered with this. So, um, I thought to myself, well, you've been writing a lot of Go, you like writing Go. Let's write some Go and solve this problem. I'm familiar with FFmpeg. Uh, and uh, I immediately ran into a problem because there is no good solution for Golang and writing GUI applications. It's great for console apps. It's great for web servers. It There's a few solutions floating around for... Uh, GUIs, but um, not great ones. And so me being stubborn, and since I have a strong dislike of a bunch of other solutions, like I could have written an Electron app. I've written Electron apps before. I don't want to do that again because it's evil. I could have fired up Visual Studio and written something in C Sharp and uh, Windows Forms or uh, WPF or whatever. But who wants to mess with that? Um, 
I mean, I thought, I, I, I want to solve this problem. So I, I want to solve the GUI problem in Go, and I want to solve this really annoying problem with clipping videos. So I've got this thing. It's here. I'll link in the description, but this is my project. I've been working on it for like the last two and a half weeks. Um, right now, it's just built for Windows, but it should be cross-platform because it's in Go. I can, I can target other CPUs and OSs, no problem. And it runs in the browser. Uh, well, the the executable doesn't run in the browser. The executable spins up a web server on some random... Lo it asks the operating system for an available network TCP port, spins up a local host web server on that port, and then asks the OS to open your default web browser. And um, the idea is that you just drop the file, so you download the download the binary, the executable, and you drop it in whatever folder all your videos are in, and then you run it. Uh, let's run that. Let's see. Let's uh, boop boop. So you, that port right there, and then it it uh, calls Windows Explorer on this address, and it. Uh, Windows goes, okay, it's a web address. Let's open up a browser window. And that's what happens. So, uh, yeah, here it is. I've tried to make something that's convenient to use. Um, I got to c play with cool technology. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is the first thing it does is it checks to see if you've got some dependencies next to it. So it wants, it will check for FFmpeg, EXE, and FFplay, and FFprobe. And these are all included in your standard official FFmpeg downloads. So the first thing it does is it checks, and it will actually tell you this will blink red and it'll go, hey, you don't have FFmpeg installed. Here's a download link. And it just takes you to the official FFmpeg site, the download section. You can download that crap and just drop it in the same directory next to it. Or you can also install FFmpeg globally on your system. Um, there's instructions for that, official instructions. that just includes it in your Windows path. Either is fine. And you need those things um, because it uses FFmpeg to do the clips and it uses FFprobe to give you source file resolution. That's important. I'll talk about that later. And you have FFplay. It's a little bit less important um, because hopefully you're using MP4s and you can just use the browser player. Um, but if you don't and you're using like an AVI file for your uh, files or a move file or FLV or, you know, then you'll need to use another player. I've got options for that, and FF Play is kind of the default other player. I'll explain that later. So it it checks for that first, and it will tell you, like I said, this will blink red, notifying you, hey, I, I had an error, and then it'll say, hey, you don't have these things installed. Here's a link, and you just go get it, and then restart this thing, and you'll be good. So once you got that, uh, it gives you a list of all the video files in the same folder next to it. Uh, you know, I'm running out of this folder right here. Hunt. For Hunt Showdown. These are all my video files, baby. And uh, you can refresh it manually, but anytime you delete a video or anytime you clip a video, it refreshes this list for you automatically. So the only time you would need this is if you go in here manually and change a file or something like that, or you do something outside. But as long as you're kind of using this app, this list is going to be current. Um, and, I, you know, I've got little little help buttons that explain things. Boop, boop, boop for all the stuff. All the stuff. And let's see. So there's the file list, and you can play videos. So here's a clip I... So let's just play one of these videos and I'll show you what's going on. So play. And uh, if it's an MP4 or it's a WebM or it's an AUG, it'll just play this browser video. 
Um, but uh, you can also play in different players. So you can play in FF Play. And I'll show you that. So right there. And it closes that middle thing out because you don't need any more. I can play that video. And it spits it up behind me. It's in a different app. Or I can do it in... Uh, yeah, alternate path. So you can just give it an executable file like this uh, legacy video player and play it and it'll play it there. And like here's VLC. So all that works. Anyways, uh, so let's go back to there. Play it here. Anyways, so play. That's how that works. Makes sense. Um, you can also delete videos from here. And uh, these two settings uh, I probably make sense to you just from me using it just now, but you can pick which player type is going to is gonna be used. Um, we've, I've also got profiles, so you can have profiles for different games because we've got different settings over here for uh, scale size and saturation and color and uh, encoding, so all this stuff. So uh, if you have got per game preferences or per video size preferences, you can make profiles. Um, so that's cool. Uh, this little box here is a resolution calculator, and this is important because the uh, the encoder in FFmpeg that makes the clips, if you give it a resolution, a target resolution, where the width or the height is an odd number, it will die, and it will error out, and it won't work. Um, so... Uh, in the future, I'd like to automate the process of, uh, like, enforcing these values so you can't get into that state or uh, auto-adjusting those values for you. But for now, it's a little bit of a manual process where um, uh, it will probe with FF probe, it'll probe the source video, get the original resolution and then calculate it against the downscale factor and give you the new size. So you can kind of tweak it. So if I change this to like 2.1, that's a good value. What about five? I'm two one five. Yeah. See if I hit clip on this, cause the width is an odd number, it would die. So you don't want to do that. Anyways, let's bring that back down to two. And so it, it, it auto-calculates based on these two values and your downscale factor, so you know. And we need to downscale because we're trying to get under that 25 megabyte Discord limit, right? Okay, so that's what this is for. So when you hit play, it, uh, it auto-populates this. You can also do it manually by just... Let me get a bigger video. My, my, my recent, one of my more recent videos will be bigger. So this is, yeah. So like last year, I still had a 1080p monitor. This year, I've got a 1440p uh, monitor. So you can see it. These newer videos are bigger. Anyways, so 08, 27, 01, this one. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Okay. So that's this side. The player, I think, should be obvious. So this is just a video player. Uh, set clip, start and stop. This is so you don't have to manually type in the start and end time. So, like, if I wanted to do it now, it 3.09 is where I clicked it. And eight seconds, boom, end time right there. So that that's cool. That's fun. This close video button is important because if you want to delete this video, you can't do it while it's playing. And pause doesn't kill the HTTP request that's streaming this. So, because it's streaming it from this web server, right? Um, so you got to close that video, then then delete it. So I just, it's a little dirty, but I put that there in case you want to do it. Um, and then on to the clip settings. 
So starting in time, I think, is obvious. The scale-down factor, I already talked about that a little bit. Um, it takes the width, divides it by this number, and then maintains aspect ratio and auto-calculates height based off of that. So whatever the aspect ratio is, that determines what the new height is based on width divided by whatever this number is. And what this value needs to be, and thus what this value needs to be, depends on the input source resolution and depends on how long your videos are and if you're hitting under that 25 megabyte Discord upload file size limit. Generally, I find cutting a 1080p in half or a 1440p in half gets you there. Um, and you don't need them to be that big anyways. Your friends will get the point. If it's a little smaller, who cares? So that's scale down factor encoding preset. So this is standard X264 stuff. Um, high level, what this does is the faster the preset is, the less work the encoder exerts to optimize bit rate. So the faster it is, it'll encode faster, but the file size is bigger. The slower it is, the more it optimizes the bit rate, the smaller the file size is, but it encodes slower. And in some cases, it encodes really slow. So like on my i5-8400, which, you know, granted isn't the newest CPU, but it's, it's a fine CPU for this task, this slow preset, if I do anything more than 10 or 15 seconds, I'm going to be sitting here for a hot minute waiting. Um, but uh, I default it to slow because I think most people probably have better CPUs than that. Um, especially the newer CPUs have uh, nicer instruction or newer uh, uh, hardware instruction sets that make this faster. The quality target. So I don't have a bit rate number target. Um, are using I'm using CRF. So what that means is you kind of tell it a uh, quality, a visual quality to target, and it auto-calculates bit rate on a frame-by-frame -frame basis based on analysis of the quote-unquote visual quality of that frame. So it's a variable bit rate, um, which means that the file size is going to be optimized. And by so it, the, if you do a static bit rate, so you say, I want this to be 3,000 KB per second, that means every single flipping frame is going to be 3,000 uh, KB. Um, and that's inefficient because you have some frames that have motion and need more bit rate, and some frames that are don't and don't need as much bit rate. And so your file size is larger, generally speaking, and um, it tends to look worse because your your the frames that need higher bit rate don't have it. They're starved. So uh, using CRF and a visual target, uh, visual quality target tends to optimize for file size better. So that's what I went with here. That's what I've been using for years. Anyways, so the lower the number, the higher the quality. The lower the number, the higher the bit rate, the larger the file size. The larger the number the lower the bit rate, the lower the quality, um, the smaller the file size. And so it's a balance. So just for reference, zero, quality targeted zero is mathematically lossless. And it's as lossless as X264 is going to get. Some people say it's not lossless, but it's lossless. Um, 18 is generally considered to be visually lossless, so it's technically lossy but your eyes can't tell the difference. Um, if you keep re-encoding the same file over and over and over again at 18, you'll see eventually some generational loss, but just in doing it once, you're not going to notice. Um, anywhere between like 22 and 30 or 28, 30 might be too high. Anything between 22 and 28 is lossy. You start introducing some visual artifacts or you'll, you'll notice a quality drop um, but you can really get the file size down and it's not that bad. It's not, doesn't look so horrible. Um, it's way better than YouTube just for reference. So like if you're used to how YouTube looks, this, the like 24 looks way better. Um, so uh, 18 being visually lossless, I find to generate file sizes that are a little bit too big. 
Um, so 24 to 28 is where I land, depending on the length of the video. So I'll go be, I'll go higher if my video, my clip's like over a minute or something like that, right? So just play with that value. Um, and then you've got some color adjustment stuff, saturation, contrast. I don't need to explain these. Everyone should know what this is. So if it's a night scene and you want to light it up a little bit, increase the contrast, increase the brightness, boom, done. You can do that here. So basic, like basic video filter stuff. Um, I might add a sharpening filter, but I don't think we need it because we're downscaling. We're not upscaling. You generally don't need to sharpen unless you're upscaling. Um, maybe there's some other filters I'd add. I would also like to add the option for other encoders. So like if you've got a GPU encoder, which a lot of people do these days, um, I'd like to support that right now. This is all CPU X264. So that's why we're still on 0015. It's not even, I'm not even hit a 1.0 yet. So still adding features. Anyways, um, I provide the ranges for what values you can put here, as well as if you hover over, you'll get what the default value is in case you lose track of where you're at. These are really sensitive. Like you can make your video look absolutely bonkers if you jack these up too high or too low. So just keep that in mind. And then you can also just play the clip when you're done. So it'll clip it and then auto play it, the new clip. And I think that's it. Yeah. So let's just clip this. Let's play that. Can I play it again? No, I got to play it from here. Play from here. Okay. So do I kill a guy in here? Let me see. Uh, uh, let's see. I'll find it. I'll find it. I swear. See? All my, all my, you have these five minute long videos and like I have to hunt stuff down. It's no good. Oh, okay, yeah, he, right there. So, 417, let's start it there. So, I've got the time stamps populated. Scale down factor is two. I'm going to speed this up because I don't want to wait too long. And let's do that. And all this is good. I don't need to adjust any of the colors. Um, and let's clip it. So you can see it's running this FFMP command. There it is. There's my clip. Boom. Play it again. So I shoot the guy with the pistol and my buddy next to me launches a stick of dynamite in there, we basically hit him at the same time. Hunt's got, uh, uh, you can do custom ammo types, and one of the custom ammo types for the crossbow is like this really wonky dynamite stick thing. Anyways, so, and then there's my new clip right there. It refreshed the, um, the thingy and dropped it in there. The available videos list, not the thingy. Anyways. So, yeah, um, there's a few more features I'd like to add, like the encoder, the alternate encoder, like I, like I said, I'd like to add that. Um, I've been thinking through how I could add a progress bar. Um, I don't know that it's possible because it's, when you hit clip, it sends a request back. And this web server here runs the FFmpeg command. And the FFmpeg command doesn't really give you a lot of useful output that can be captured. There is some visual output if you sit here and watch it, but it's not something I can capture with code super easily. I'm still trying. But like having a progress bar on this UI showing you the clip encoding process, I don't know that that's going to be possible in this tool. If it is, I'll add it. I'll keep messing with it, but I just don't know. Right now, the best I've got is when you click clip, it grays out all the other buttons. You can't click other things while it's generating the clip file for you. So anyways, um, 
in the UI, I'm not a UX person. I'm not a graphic design person. I'm a programmer, engineer person. So I make things work. And uh, when I try to make things look good, I only do okay slash bad. And I think this is in that bad slash okay category in terms of how it looks. I'm sure if someone who really does like UIs got a hold of this, they can make it look a lot better. So maybe that, maybe that'll happen as well. But right now, I'm sitting at 0015. And right now, I'm interested in this, so I'm updating it often. You can see like all of my commits are from you know hours and days and weeks ago so this is pretty active and uh i've got a to do here so like i might consider this a 1.0 if i add extra os supports ffmpeg technically supports sub second start and stop so what that means is like and I hit um, set clip start right here. It's grabbing the seconds value. If there's a fractional second value, it's possible to have that. I think I'd like to add that so the the the, the clip start and stop can be more precise. Um, I've got some code cleanup stuff to do. And I'd like to support other encoders. So like if you want to use a different encoder besides X264, as long as F FFmpeg technically supports an encoder, there's no reason why we can't use it. Um, I'd like to support the major ones. So like X264, um, any GPU encoder, um, maybe AV1. I don't know, probably not. That's bonkers on CPUs. But hey, I mean, there are AV1 encoders in FFmpeg, and I think there are AV1 encoders in FFmpeg that are GPU-bound, so maybe that'll work. I don't know. We'll see. But um, if I can get this stuff done and get some other people besides me to use this and give feedback, uh, and I implement that feedback, we can probably be at a 1.0 release on this. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think. If you've got a different workflow and you're like tough, you're dumb, use this program. It's better. Tell me, please. Um, if this looks good to you, you'd like to try it. I'll put the link to the GitHub repo in the video description and you can use it and let me know how it goes. Grab, uh, get a hold of me on discord or email or create a GitHub ticket, I guess. Or leave a comment on the video, I guess. I don't know. Do YouTube stuff. Who cares? Um, I think that's it. Yeah. I rambled for almost 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, wow. Anyways. Okay. That's it. Let me know what you think. I've had fun making this and using it. And uh, it's it makes going through my mountain of video files that I've got saved up forever. A little less daunting, for sure. Oh, that's it.